How's your heart feeling? Take a deep breath. Relax. Why don't we take this moment to feel the heartbeats and to bring some affection to the heart? Take this moment to feel the awareness around the navel center. Bring back the love. compassion to your navel look around what do you see what do you feel don't label it just feel it and take the next few moments to effortlessly breathe in breathe out I am Chandresh Bhardwaj and this is Break the Norms. Namaste everyone. How are you feeling today? The year is ending. There's few more weeks to go. And I know 2020 was not the most ideal year for many people the loneliness the stress the darkness it all showed up this year but for many of you it was also the year of self reflection self awareness many of you expanded your abundance your healing while many of you struggled with that abundance and healing the point is whatever is happening and unfolding the only option we have is to trust the process if we don't trust the process then mind steps in and mind starts to create its own battle and that battle is complicated that battle is not even worth fighting in this episode i just want to share a story a few insights on how you can come back to your strength how you can come back to your roots and hopefully that will help and before i get into the core topic the story that i want to share a quick reminder to join leela gurukul you can join it on facebook and instagram but above all sign up for the newsletter because that's how you'll get to know the course offerings the weekly workshops meditations and all the stuff that we are planning for you it's looking exciting i'm really happy the way it's shaping up and hopefully in one month or so you all are going to experience leela and i'm very excited for that now topic of today don't cut your roots <laughs> if you have been listening to my podcast or even following me on instagram you know by now that i am a big fan a big advocate of roots what exactly is our root our root is defined by our ancestors our family values belief systems conditioning the liberation the success the failure the sadness the happiness but also the stories the roles that have been defining our existence but also the existence of family the roots go through many changes you could be born in a family of doctors but you know end up hating the medical science or you could be born in a family of spiritual healers and not at all agreeing with the idea of spirituality or vice versa right roots go through changes based on uh, not only the effect of ancestral lineage trauma but also how you choose to react and respond to everything there have been many experiences in my personal life where i you know see the fears but also the liberating moments of my roots each one of them have been helpful you know they have been very much a guiding force to what i'm doing today and what i'm sharing with you uh, today there's one story that unfolded for me 
a few days ago and it unfolded because there is a huge protest happening in north india you know that's where i come from the farmers thousands of them they are on the street they do not want to let the corporate dictate what they want to grow on their farms and how they want to grow it's a political issue and uh, the more i get into it the more complicated it will become but i'll tell you one thing it made my heart bleed when i saw those thousands of farmers those old senior citizens you know grandma of people like just on the street protesting it just it burns your heart it bleeds your heart because you know you are here you're helpless but that's where the world is in 2020 wherever you look there is eruption happening there is fire happening everywhere right the fire of change the fire of you know justice the fire of just raising your voice it's all happening this year i've been saying this year is the year of birth and death death of suppression death of many belief systems but also the birth of creativity birth of your new voice please don't feel the pressure of the birth or death is not happening for you they they'll happen in their own course and one thing that i don't enjoy that whenever someone shares something like this on a spiritual podcast or a book then our mind starts to you know feel this insecurity that it's not happening with me and whenever mind feels that insecurity you know what it does right it starts creating stories narratives it starts attracting circumstances that might make the situation even more complicated for you so never ever feel the pressure that what i am sharing or someone else is sharing it needs to happen with you overnight it doesn't we got to respect the natural course of our spiritual journey it's super important so the story that unfolded for me was uh this conversation i had with uh this farmer you know who lived very nearby our house in north india we lived in this house for a very you know short span of time and there were many farms around and i would spend most of my time there most of it uh, whenever there were summer vacations whenever i would come back from school i would climb on trees and jump from trees spend a lot of time there i think that was probably my first introduction in this lifetime toward wildlife in a way you know the flowers the snakes the other wild animals that would show up it all happened there and i was in first or second grade i was pretty young and um, that's you know when we lived there for a short span of time So anyway this particular incident happened in one of those summer vacation days i believe and this farmer i called him uncle because i used to see him every day but also it's indian tradition really to call everyone uncle and auntie and i i used to see him every day we would chit chat and when i was little i would only hang out with people way older than my age my friends my crushes everyone was way older than me good times for sure you know great times and uh, this incident that happened with the uncle was just very heartwarming it became heartwarming with age because when life starts to unfold experiences you realize the importance of these effortless life lessons that show you know shows up for you So this particular farmer he had this huge you know field huge farm and he would grow trees there you know different fruits or just different you know kind of trees the way he would set up those trees was very interesting he would space out the trees so there was considerable distance between the trees and none of the trees looked similar like the height the shape uh, he wouldn't trim them he would keep them as they are but he would spend a lot of time with them so it wasn't that he was lazy and not doing the work he was there pretty much all day doing the work taking care of them but he had his own unique way of taking care of them the farms around him they were different the trees looked symmetrical and there were countless trees 
and they were also more commercial because you know any fruits that would grow in those farms you know they would sell those they would export a lot of those fruits and my hometown uh, specialized in certain kind of fruits like apples lychees mangoes so they would you know really uh, export a lot of that stuff and i have always been a very close observer of humans situations and all the patterns around me that was just a curious you know nature of mine so one day i asked him that is it me or you really have a different pattern of of these trees and the other fields around you they have very different patterns they look so similar but yours look so different it looks very unstructured and kind of raw i mean i didn't tell him this when i was in third grade but now i feel it was very unstructured and raw and he said yeah you are right i do grow them differently he said the trees the farms around you that you are seeing they are commercial farms most of them they sell the fruits export them i sell my fruit but not all of it because i also don't grow the fruit for the goal of selling i just enjoy it farming that's why i do what i do and he said also you have to understand one thing and a lot of people do that when trees start to grow beyond a certain height or they start to grow in a direction that might be interfering to the other trees or it might be interfering to just whatever your plan was then the farmers cut the root of the trees and they have a way of cutting the branches cutting the roots uh, so that the tree stops growing after that so it doesn't grow up after that it grows old or it stays like that for a while then eventually it dies and he said that's a sort of a less violent way of ending the life of tree also let me share one thing with you there are tribes in different parts of africa or different you know other countries as well mostly tribal regions because this practice that you're going to hear is a very tribal practice so what they do if they have to cut down a tree they don't cut it with like the whole instrument they won't bring in you know all that violent stuff to cut the tree but they start yelling at the tree every day they would yell at tree like screaming cursing yelling loudly and it gets louder and eventually the tree starts to fall down and these tribes believe that this is a less violent way of cutting down the tree because if you keep yelling at it keep cursing at it eventually the tree feels your heaviness and it automatically starts to go down it's obviously not a less violent way i think it's even more violent right but a lot of tribes practice that i don't know how many are practicing now also third layer of this story my grandfather who was ayurveda practitioner ayurveda doctor so he told me this he said you know whenever we go out and get the herbs and all those you know ayurveda ingredients he said we don't go to the tree and cut down the tree and get it so he used to meditate around the tree he would put that intention in the meditation that i need this ashwagandha or i need this turmeric or i need whatever the herb or stuff was and he would you know meditate there either one day second day every day just to take permission from the tree that whenever you are ready you can give me this ashwagandha and he will not pluck that from the tree and lot of ayurveda practitioners used to do that a lot of uh, monks who make the meditation beads they also do that they used to do that for sure they would not pluck the beads the wood from the tree to make the beads they would only request the tree in meditation through mantras that we need this branch we need this wood or we need this plant or herb to make medicine or to make a mala or meditation bead and whenever you are ready you give me that because i have seen my grandfather never buying the direct you know ayurveda medicine from market he would always make his own medicines he would get the raw material so he told me this and you know when i spoke to my father he said yep not only your grandpa but many ayurveda doctors did that and many monks you know do that many tantra practitioners do that the way 
we do rituals when i do rituals with my guru uh, we practice a lot of these things where we don't cut down the tree we just request we just honor it's not obviously possible all the time but whenever it is that's the way to do it so when that uncle in the farm he told me uh, that he does not cut down the roots he does not you know cut down any branch he let them grow as they wish to he let them find their own growth and that's why they're spaced out so that you know he doesn't feel the pressure of cutting down a tree just because they are next to each other so that was a very interesting concept for me to listen and understand it made me curious about the trees from that moment onward because in the nature there are so many healing outlets but tree in itself is a very powerful healing force if you have a tree around you and if you start to meditate under that tree i assure you you and the tree are going to have a very powerful dynamic it just happens you're meditating with a living being it's extremely powerful so when that uncle the farmer he told me this story of not cutting down the roots because he really wants the roots to you know find their own way the branches to find their own way it stayed with me it stayed with me for number of reasons during those days but as i stepped into college and left the finance world and stepped into spirituality this story evolved into some new profound ways for me one of the most powerful lesson that this story taught me was not to cut your roots and never allow anyone else to cut your roots but i'll also say this others only cut your roots if you allow them if usually we are the ones cutting down our roots and others step in after that if i allow other person to cut down the root for any reason unconsciously maybe i was not even aware of it but it would be pretty much you know starting with me at least 98% of the times it's us who open that door and then others start to cut down the roots but ultimately it's really you who has that power not to cut down the roots it's important to understand here why do we cut down the roots why would a human being cut down their roots and the root here signifies your creativity your foundation your essence as a human being your essence as this powerful divine force your creativity your playfulness your uniqueness that's your roots the love the affection the strength that's passed on to you from your ancestors that's your root all the stuff that you are you know destined to make happen that stuff is your root we cut down roots for plenty of reasons and we all have our own unique story behind it what i'm going to share is just a very generalized reasoning uh, behind cutting down our roots and my hope is that you find your story in it that why you are cutting down your roots one of the most important aspect to understand here is we are afraid of our wildness we don't honor the wild in us we are afraid of it this wildness is our voice it's our entire expression the wildness doesn't mean being sexual being sensual being poetic it's none of that fancy poetic stuff being wild is who you are the way you emote the way you express the way you live and love that's your wildness my friend and in the wild we all have our own way of dancing we all have our own way of expressing human being is extremely afraid of its wildness because we are brainwashed into living a certain civilized code each time you will try to follow that code that norm in the society you will slowly kill your wildness you know whenever the society honors you it could be through an award through a certificate through some sort of title of national best seller 
you know, awards for telling a certain story. It's almost an unconscious way of society to buy you in, to buy your creativity. Because if I am honored to create some ABC stuff, then my mind is going to unconsciously surrender to keep creating that ABC stuff because guess what? It's honored. It's rewarded. And who doesn't like to be rewarded? And many other people who wanted to create, they might also fall into that trap because he was rewarded for creating this kind of story. Let me also jump into that. I know plenty of creators, plenty of storytellers who are not telling the stories they want to tell only because they see the pattern. What constitutes as New York Times bestseller? What brings more likes? What brings more clients? So when they see what's being rewarded in the society, they unconsciously start creating that. And they don't even know why they were do they're doing it. It becomes an unconscious habit. And this is what I call not honoring your wild. Because in wild, there is no structure. There is no formula, no template. There's madness. There's method to that madness because when you bring in awareness, the wildness ultimately reaches the divinity. So you truly have to understand what defines your wildness and how can you truly honor it? How can you truly express it? One way that we unconsciously butcher it is by conforming to the norms formulas and templates which don't serve us but somewhere our mind adapts this idea that this is awarded and honored and I'm going to keep doing that another reason how we cut down our roots is by comparing our journey constantly if you don't look a certain way you know your mind starts forcing you that you got to change the way you look you got to change the way your skin feels the way your belly is the way your body shape is because guess what this is not beautiful and if it's not beautiful you will not be admired not be desired and then you start changing you start trying too hard to look how others are looking and that brings me you know back to that tree story all the trees are looking the same they remind me of all the humans who want to look the same only because they're afraid of that unknown that could awake in just embracing the uncertainty the reason i have so much love for jungles is because nothing looks the same there the reason i have deep respect for you know teaching my stuff at the rehab community because when the session ends in the rehab community I cannot tell you the rawness it awakes everyone is reacting in their own way no one thankfully is reacting in a spiritual way because I'm sitting there and they got to react in a spiritual way and the rehab I'm talking about is a place I've been going to you know for eight years now they know me there I know them there it's an experience that fulfills my soul with so much love for the stuff I'm sharing with them because they're just honoring the wild. And the reason why they are in the rehab is because society fails to deliver the right answers. Society fails to fulfill their thrust for the answers. And when you don't get the answers, the mind clings on to whatever is easiest available around. And then drugs, substance abuse, addiction to sex, alcohol, drugs, all of that starts. Coming back to the point, drop comparisons, my friend. If you really want to expand and honor the roots, drop comparisons. These comparisons are eating you alive and they're eating you so slowly that you won't even realize until they'll eat the entire soul. The body may still be there, but your entire soul is eaten away. And these comparisons will limit your expansion majorly. In the last episode, I shared about how Naval Center is so powerful. But as a society, we're brainwashed into always sticking the navel inside. And it's obsessed with the chest looking in a certain way. For men, it's a certain way. But for women, it's, of course, you know, we all know it. 
for women it's objectified in a certain way that if you do not have a certain kind of breast the woman starts to feel inferior she starts to feel misfit and that's sad because you are trying to tame the most sacred wild force out there the feminine force that's going to come back and haunt the entire universe and i think that one of the reasons this year is so crazy is because we have been dishonoring we have been insulting the most gentle tender forces in the nature including the feminine force another significant aspect of the roots is through our ancestors our ancestors will always be a very beautiful part of our root energy and i would recommend that you listen to the episode on ancestors also listen to the episode on karmic contracts that will be majorly helpful but in nutshell the point is find out what have been the belief systems through your ancestors it could be lighting the candles on you know full moon night it could be doing a certain ritual on the new year or on the birthdays if you know the birth dates of some of the members of your ancestors make sure to meditate to honor them in in some beautiful way even donating food charity uh, hosting little feast for the homeless i mean little things you know in their name they can make a huge difference because you cannot honor or heal the roots if you're not acknowledging your ancestors they will always be a very important part of this root energy in meditation before you start the meditation as you end the meditation always acknowledge them always bring the compassion affection and just pure love to the ancestors because the story you are experiencing is not the most original story it's a remix of a story that they have gone through you are living the you know restructure revisit of that story it's a same script but on a new character the good thing is you have the power to rewrite this script but it can only happen if you you know bring the ancestors into the picture the original writers of this script because they will only help you create a better story and as the holidays are going to show up each one of you is going to feel a certain connection with the roots because holidays have always been the time of being with the family being with your roots you know, sharing memories creating memories so when holidays come sometimes we feel this sadness emptiness sometimes we feel a trigger whenever holidays happen and if you notice that sadness emptiness or trigger sometimes also happen on sundays or on other holidays because the way our wiring is done this wiring this chain is very long it goes back to our ancestors it goes back to our you know grandparents great grandparents and so on so whenever a certain you know occasion arises you will feel mixed feelings a one way a one powerful way to go beyond this sadness is to build a consistent momentum a consistent flow of your spiritual energy through meditation through reflecting on what your ancestors are what are the fears of your family what are the belief systems of your family how your family feels safe or threatened how have been the relationships in your family has the expression of emotions been openly accepted or is it suppressed knowing more and more about your family will help through your family get to know their grandparents and so on when you start to inquire all puzzles start to solve and if you do happen to be with your family in this holiday and again the triggers the craziness starts to show up instead of reacting or leaving the room start understanding that pattern of your fear and trigger start questioning why do i feel this anger when someone says a particular thing respect your boundary you know consciously disobey 
and trust the power of your breathing your breathing will help you to respond mindfully to respond in a respectful way if you have to disobey do it with absolute awareness your breathing will be helpful understanding the patterns the uneasiness will be helpful but leaving the room shutting it down will not be helpful because then it will come back and it will come back in a much more bigger powerful way and whenever you meditate stick to the navel center invite the courage the strength the guidance around the navel don't lose touch with your playfulness don't lose touch with that mother earth around you and i promise you everything we shared in this episode will make sense and it will unfold just the right step for you i believe i shared a lot of stuff in this episode and it's going above 30 minutes which is usually not the timing i want to keep but i guess that was the nature of this episode i hope it was helpful if you resonate with this episode if it was helpful do share it on your instagram invite others to listen and please do write a review of the podcast on itunes the reviews help they help to expand the reach thank you for listening be safe be well and i'll speak to you next week i hope this podcast may travel through the untapped universe of your darkness light courage passion and so much more please do subscribe and be ready to break your norms i am so excited and very honored to be part of your sacred journey through this podcast